Hi, welcome to my talk. Today we're going to explore how soil microbes are crucial drought management partners in almond production. I am Dr. Carl Wyant, the Vice President of Ag Science here at Helia Agriculture, and we're excited to share these data with you. Of course, Helia Agriculture, we specialize in microalgae technology. We are located out of the Phoenix, Arizona area, and we have a number of products. Phycoterra is which I'll, I'll talk about today, and its, and its counterpart, Phycoterra Organic. Great microalgae to, products to mix with fertilizer. Then we have our seed treatment product, which goes on the seed. So thank you guys for, for taking the time to watch this presentation. I appreciate it. One piece that often comes up is what are microalgae? Microalgae is not the stuff in the middle of the pond in the summer. That's a different photosynthetic organism. It's not the stuff on the side of the beach. That's seaweed. That's a closely related cousin of, of microalgae. Microalgae is a single celled organism that lives in the soil and it can convert sunlight and use carbon dioxide to make biomass. And we've mastered the art and science of growing these microalgae at scale. So we've taken a certain strain of microalgae and we've been able to turn it into products. And the product we use in the agriculture space is a pasteurized food for microbes. So we use this microalgae as a food source to feed the fungi and bacteria that are below ground in your soil. And we can, we can wake them up and put them back to work for you in your cropping system. And what we'll explore here is how these microbes have gone dormant and how you can wake them up with a simple program with phycoterra or phycoterra organic and use them as drought management partners this slide shows our mode of action in a nutshell the slide the plate that's on the slide that's on the left side that's business as usual soil microbes in agricultural soil this is a western soil high pH, calcareous, low organic matter soil. And you can see just how hard it is to make a living as a microbe out west. So as a result, your soil suffers. You don't have the microbes. You don't have the, the uh, soil health uh, properties that they bring. And so your soil might resemble some cake batter-like substance. That's our soil. It's hard to get water into, and it's hard to get through these drought conditions. I do want to make a point that these microbes and while they're not growing on this plate here on the left side of the screen, they're still there. They're dormant. They're so hungry for food that they go dormant. So we make one change to this, this plate system. We add the phycoterra. That's this green plate that's on the right side of the screen. We've woken up that abundance. We've woken up that diversity. Those microbes are back to work for that grower. They're secreting glues and creating nets in the soil, tying soil particles together. So one thing we've seen is here we can quantify the microbes that are in the soil, wake them up out of dormancy, and here start to restore those soil properties. In a soil that looks like this bottom right test tube, good aggregation, good pore space, this is a soil that can help get through drought. And those microbial partners that you've now woken up will come along for the ride. So let's talk about this relationship between microbes improving your soil health that's the aggregation that i talked about earlier and drought so really it has to do with water storage water movement and water storage so the first thing you got to do to to get through a drought you've got to get moisture into the ground whether it's coming from winter rainfall or it's coming from your irrigation system a well-structured soil characterized by a great microbial community will help get more water into the ground and then at a more microscopic level you can store more water around soil particles and in the pore spaces. And as a net result on a healthy soil, your water holding capacity can go up. And that's the moisture you can count on in between irrigation events and in between rainstorms to get your crop through the drought. On a much very more, much more very microscopic level are the things that microbes bring along with them. And these are the things they secrete. So just uh, keep in mind this scenario that I outlined earlier, a soil that doesn't have a very good microbial population. This is business as usual for most ag soils. And here that's that plate that's on the, the left side of the screen. We wake them up with Phycoterra or Phycoterra organic. We have a whole almond program that can do that. And here we show that uh, having an improved abundance and diversity 
really gives you extra benefits for drought. And that's it has to do with the things microbes secrete, antioxidants and osmoprotectants. These are these molecules that are released that help those, those uh, microbes contribute to getting a crop through abiotic crop stress, so or abiotic stress. So really you can't see this, hard to show on a PowerPoint, but just imagine having that abundance, having that diversity and getting those benefits from the things that the microbes secrete. So this gets me into our, our, some of our data here. We have a Phycoterra program for almonds. And so we're waking up those microbes. We're improving that soil so we can get more moisture into the ground. We're getting those, those osmoprotectants, those antioxidants that can help push that crop through some abiotic crop stress. Then at the end of the year, we're also getting rewarded with more yield because we made that crop's life a little easier indirectly by waking up the microbes. So those microbes bring with them lots of benefits improved nutrient availability in the soil, improved soil structure, improved water holding capacity. And like I said before, that abiotic stress relief, the, the, the help to get through the tough times. So let's talk about that. We have an almond program that we've done with third-party contract research organizations. And here we go, like to go out after harvest, uh, sometime in October and November, three quarts per acre. And then we start up again here March, April, April or May, May through June. So fairly wide application timings, really following that fertilizer program that everybody loves. And uh, here a, a way to get the product out in a prescriptive way. So we're spoon feeding those microbes all year round and keeping them, keeping them working all year round as well. So here's an example of what a, a grower program that that's, um, we've been working with for a number of years. Here's their almond production program. In March, they're leading the way with 30 gallons of CAN 17, and then it's transitioning into their UN32 program, plus some uh, some other fertilizers with potassium and, and, and phosphorus in it for the April and May shot. And then they go out again here in September and late September with some UN32. So we're catching the ride with our, our Phycoterra, the three quarts per acre that I mentioned earlier, in each one of these monthly rides. So we can add that microbial food add that new mode of action to your favorite plant nutrition program. So let's look at the data. So this data I mentioned on this program, that's the three quarts per acre, four times over the year. Here in 2020, we started our program in 2019 in, after harvest. And here in 2020, in these two locations, Sutter and Atwater, we were able to put in the Sutter location, 517 pounds an acre or more yield on a tree relative to grower standard. And when we crunch those numbers using 2020 prices, that's a 20 to one ROI for the program. In Atwater, a little so more south in the valley, and here we have in some very sandy soils, we were able to put almost 300 pounds an acre on the tree. And if you crunch those numbers, a four to one ROI. So really nice evidence that crops and, and permanent crops in particular will respond to improving that relationship with the soil microbes. And they'll respond to all those benefits that a, a woke an awake soil microbe biome will bring to you. Let's fast forward into 2021. You can see those drought conditions have changed drastically since the last slide. A lot more red, a lot more dark red. So the exceptional drought and extreme drought. So here in those two sites, remember they're not on year two of this program where we've improved soil health and woken up the microbiome. And here, what we found in our, our plots is that in the Sutter location, we were able to stack 861 pounds per acre over grower standard. And when we crunch those numbers compared to with, with uh, 2021 pricing, another 20 to one ROI. On the uh, Atwater site, again, very sandy soil, very prone to drought stress. Here we had just under 170 pounds an acre improvement over grower standard and a four to one ROI. So consistent results year over year, despite that change in the drought, the drought pressure. We've also got some sensors in the ground that are measuring soil moisture every 15 minutes at one, two and three foot depth that are at water site. That's the sandiest site of all of our locations throughout the valley. And here what we find is that we've been able to get year two of our program and we've been able to, to one, improve that soil structure and so I'll start you on the very left of the screen. Here we're storing more moisture during the winter 
uh, late 2020 and early 2021. So we're coming into that spring irrigation season, especially at one and two feet depths with about 20 to 30% more soil moisture compared to grower standard. And we're continuing that, that elevated soil moisture through the summer when it's really hot out, we're continuing that elevated soil moisture around just under just around 15% for one and two, three, uh, one and two feet. And here, once we shut the water off for harvest, that's where that, that extra pool of moisture really comes into play. And we can help with that late season crop stress by having more moisture at one and two feet. Now I say this is, this is the second year of the program. So we've really made a lot of changes to the soil microbiome and, and soil structure. So we're able to put a lot more water away. And here what we're seeing late 2021 is we're starting to store that winter rain that's coming through that Halloween rainstorm and some of those December rainstorms. We're actually putting that water away in the bank for when we start 2022. One question we've been able to answer because of our trialing efforts is, does soil health pay? And the answer is yes. So we're investing in our soil health, our soil structure, our soil microbiome with the Phycoterra or Phycoterra organic program. Here I took a look at all of our data for Sutter and Atwater over two years, two different varieties, Monterey and Nonpareil. And here I have a pretty nice sample size to work with. So in 2020, we only won 75% of our trials on that three quart per acre, pro, per acre per application program. In 2021, despite the drought pressure, we won 100% of those trials. And these are all third party independent researchers uh, that, that back this up. So if you look at where these wins ended up on an average for both of these varieties, both sites, we're looking at 2020, a 301 pound per acre average over grower standard. In 2021, it was 647. So we're starting to collect this evidence that soil health investments can compound on themselves. And when you start making that soil better, you start to re reap those awards in year two even bigger. So that's that's shown in the nets here. This is in the lower left-hand corner. Our net in 2020 was 663 additional dollars over grower standard. And that includes the cost of the Phycoterra program. And in 2021, it was almost $1,500 an acre because of that large gain in the nets. And the ROIs track seven to one for 2020, 13 to one ROI uh, for 2021, 10 to one uh, on average. And one thing we're really proud of is how we help stretch these fertilizer and water budgets. We can make your inputs work even harder. So what we've done is we've calculated nutrient use efficiency where we, where we look at how much yield, pounds per acre yield per uh, pound of nitrogen an acre put out. And what we found is that we can make your pound of nitrogen, that investment in one pound of nitrogen, work 13% harder than grower standard. And that's because you're bringing those microbial partners uh, and, and waking them up out of dormancy and putting them back to work. On the water productivity standpoint, we can make that acre inch of water, you know, produce 11% on average more yield relative to grower standard. So lots of great great connections here between making that investment in your soil and your soil microbiome, getting those improved year over year stacks for yield and net and return on investment. And here making those input dollars of nutrients and water, water work a lot harder for you. So the call to action here is drought is expected through winter 2021 and 2022. We're not out of the woods yet. I know it's rained a few times since uh, since October here, but uh, we're still in that drought. So if you can begin building your soil health program now, especially this spring, that first fertilizer shot out of the gate here in March or, or late February, depending on where you live, great way to make that investment in your soil health and put, put those microbes to work. So I'm showing on the screen here, this uh, the drought that's expected to remain here. Here that's show, showing it up to late February 2022. Uh, uh, recently, they had another drought outlook map out and extended into April. Shows the same level of brown. Drought persists for the for the valley, and so we're expected to have these this water challenge again in 2022. And with that, that's the end of my talk. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your attention. I'm Dr. Carl Wyant, Vice President of Ag Science here at Helier. If you'd like more information on our products, please visit www.phycoterra.com. Thank you.